In this video, I'll be starting with the basics of how to solve equations algebraically. Once you master this method, it's like a cheat code to mathematics. Take these two examples. Without algebra, you can probably figure them out. Maybe it takes you a few minutes, possibly even longer, but with algebra, you can solve these in seconds. We can't jump straight in the deep end, however, so we're going to start with some simpler examples. Let's take x, take three equal to five. The goal here is to find the value of x. Now you can probably already tell me the answer. And initially solving equations algebraically is going to seem like a lot of extra work, but it's a method that once you learn it makes more complicated problems much, much easier. So the first thing I want to focus on is the equal sign. That's what makes this an equation that tells you that the left hand side of the equation is equal to the right hand side. It's like a balancing scale. Remember those old balancing scales where you'd put weights on one side and weights on the other? And when it's level, that means the weights are equal. That's what this equal sign is saying, that the two sides of the balancing scale are equal. So on the left-hand side here, we've got x take three. On the right-hand side, we've got five. So the goal is to get x by itself on the left-hand side and have the answer on the right-hand side. The way we do this is we use the inverse of whatever operations we're using. So here we've got a subtract three. The inverse of subtraction is addition because if I add three to this subtract three, I have zero. So the first thing we do is we add three to the left-hand side. And to keep things balanced, an equation always must be balanced. It always must be equal. Uh, we need to also add three to the right hand side. So we're going to have five plus three on the right. Whatever we do to the left, we must do to the right. On the left here, we've got subtract three plus three, that's zero. So I'm just left with X here. On the right, I've got five plus three, which is eight. And that's our answer. Let's look at another example. We might have something like two X equal to 23. This is saying two multiplied by X equals 23. Remember in algebra, we don't usually write the multiplication sign. The inverse of multiplication is division. If I divide by two here, I'll just be left with one X on the left. So on the left, I want to divide by two and I need to do the same thing to the right hand side, divide by two. Then two X divided by two is just one lot of X. 23 divided by two is 11.5. So that's the inverse of multiplication. Let's look at division. We might have something like X divided by two equal to five. Let me just number these so it doesn't get too confusing. Okay, so this is saying a number divided by two equals five. Again, you can probably tell me the answer. We're focusing on the method. It's kind of like riding a bike. Why do you learn to ride a bike? To get from point A to point B quicker, but everyone starts with training wheels. So the inverse of division is multiplication, so we want to multiply by two on the left. X divided by two multiplied by two would just be X, but we also need to multiply by two on the right hand side. So five multiplied by two. On the left, we're just left with X. On the right, we've got five times two, which is 10. Okay, so that's the inverse operation for subtraction, multiplication, division. Now let's look at addition. You might have something like X plus 10 equal to 32. The inverse of addition is subtraction, just like the inverse of subtraction was addition. So we want to subtract 10 from the left hand side here, x plus 10, take 10. And we also need to subtract 10 from the right hand side as well. Whatever we do to the left, we do to the right to keep things balanced. Perfectly balanced as all things should be. So on the left here, plus 10 take 10 is zero. So we're just left with X on the left hand side. On the right, 32 take 10 is 22. And we have our answer of X equal to 22. Okay, I hope this is making sense so far. Let's look at a slightly more complicated example. So here we're going to have two operations, a subtraction and a multiplication. And this is equal to 45. So which one do we do first? Do we want to divide by eight? or do we want to subtract five first? Well, you could try dividing by eight, but you'll notice it's much more complicated. What if we divided everything by eight here? What would we have? We'd have five on eight, take eight X on eight, equal to 45 on eight. 
we have a fraction here, we're going to have a mixed number here, it gets really messy. Um, so rather, we would rather uh, deal with that plus 5. So the first inverse operation we're going to do here is subtract 5. So when we don't have the sign, by the way, remember it's like a plus. So we're going to have 5, take 5, take 8x equal to 45. And what do I need to do the right? I need to subtract 5 because that's what I've done on the left hand side. 5 take 5 is 0, so I'm just left with negative 8x here. 45 take 5 is 40. And then we can deal with the multiplication. We want to do the inverse of multiplication. Remember that's division. We also want to include that sign because we want a positive x on the left hand side, not a negative x. So divide by negative 8, divide 40 by negative 8, Negative 8 divided by negative 8 is just 1, so we've got x on the left. 40 divided by negative 8, remember your rules of negative numbers, that's going to be a negative number, and then 40 divided by 8 is 5. So final answer there, x equal to negative 5. All right, do you think you're ready for an example with three operations now? Okay, so let's get even more complicated. 3x plus 5 on 4 equal to 8. Now, which operation are we going to deal with first? Well, in the last example, we said we dealt with the positive 5 first. We subtracted 5 because we didn't want to deal with this multiplication. In this example, we're going to deal with the division first. We cannot just subtract a 5. You need to think of this plus 5 as actually 5 on 4. So another way of writing this fraction on the left is 3x on 4 plus 5 on 4. Remember, think back to adding fractions. That's another way we could write that. If we subtracted 5, we'd still be left with some fraction there. So subtracting 5 doesn't make sense in this case. The first thing we want to deal with is the division by 4. So the inverse of division is multiplication. Let's multiply both sides by 4. Here we've got 3x plus 5 divided by 4 multiplied by 4 equal to 8 multiplied by 4. This is going to take a number of steps of working out. 3x plus 5 on 4 multiplied by 4 is just 3x plus 5. On the right hand side, 8 times 4 is 32. Now we can deal with that positive 5. This is now like the previous example. So now we want to subtract 5. So we'll have 3x plus 5 take 5 equal to 32 take 5. Plus 5 take 5 is 0, so we're just left with 3x. 32 take 5 is 27, and now finally the last step to get x by itself, do the inverse of multiplying by 3, which is dividing by 3. 3x divided by 3 is just x, and 27 divided by 3 is 9. So the answer for x there is 9. And remember with examples like this where you take lots of steps, you can always go back to the original equation and check. So take that value of x, uh, substitute it in for x in the original equation and make sure it equals 8. So 3 times 9 is 27 plus 5 is 32 divided by 4 is 8. Uh, so you can always check you got the right answer at the end. So hopefully you're getting the idea of balancing now and also the inverse operation. In these examples we looked at the inverse of addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. And you can think of the inverse operation as undoing whatever operation you have in the equation. So if you have a division by 4, you want to multiply by 4 to sort of undo that division or reverse that division by 4. This basic idea lies at the foundation of a lot of mathematics. It's a really important skill to master. So let's go back to the original uh, problems then. And I want to show you how easy these are with algebra. Firstly, we want to set up the equation. So you have to do a bit of interpretation. And this is a skill in itself. Uh, but if they tell you that we have 14 less than twice what I spent on a shirt, we're going to call this x. So we'll call that 2x because it's twice something. That means multiplied by 2. 14 less than is subtract 14 and that equaled 42, the total spent on the shirt. Then, have a look at this. This is just like what we were just solving. Uh, so 
do the inverse of subtraction, which is addition. So I'm going to add 14 to both sides. I'll just be left with 2x on the left. On the right, I'll have 42 plus 14, which is 56. And then divide by 2, the inverse of multiplying is division by 2. 56 divided by 2 is 28. So the final answer there is 28 pounds. See how easy that was? Literally solved in seconds. The next example, uh, divide 80 pounds among three people so that the second will have twice as much as the first and the third will have five less than the second. Again, you can wrap your head in knots trying to figure this out or you can use algebra and solve it instantly. So uh, the second will have twice as much as the first. That's what we're going to label x. So we've got x plus 2x, which is twice the amount of the first and then five less than the second. If the second is 2x, then we'll have 2x take five. That's five less than the second person. The total is 80. Next, uh, you need to think back to simplifying expressions for these terms here. x plus 2x plus 2x is 5x. Uh, here I have a subtract five. The inverse of that is add five. So I'll add five to both sides. That will get rid of that uh, subtract 5 on the right I'll have 85 and then I have a multiply by 5 the inverse of that is divide by 5 divide both sides by 5 and I have 85 divided by 5 is 17 so the first person got 17 pounds so let's just write that down here the first person got 17 pounds the second person would get twice that so 34 pounds and the third person gets five less than that, so 29 pounds. And then check they all add up to 80 pounds, which they should, and we're done. So hopefully that demonstrates a little bit of the power of uh, algebra and solving equations algebraically. I hope you found that helpful. Please leave a like if you did, subscribe if you wanna see more content, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.